All right. How's everyone? Good. Thank you. Um, so my name is Jeff Dickey. Uh, I'm Chief uh, Innovation Officer at Redapt. Uh, I've got a, assembled a great panel here today uh, to kind of talk about OpenStack and appliances and kind of where that kind of fits in this ecosystem. So I um, just want to start, start with uh, an introduction. Go ahead. Perfect. I'm Jim Sangster with Marantis. I run the program that's showcasing and introducing converged appliances. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. And we even have one up on the floor to show. Thanks. Hi, my name's Ken Wan. I'm Director of Marketing at HP. Um, one of the things that I do is I run our optimized cloud solutions, which are, which are our integrated solutions. I've been at HP for about four years. Prior to that, I uh, spent some time at SGI doing solutions and spent a number of years at, at Sun Microsystems doing solutions as well. Hey, good afternoon. I'm uh, Rob Esker with NetApp. I uh, started the OpenSec, I'm sorry, yeah, the OpenSec effort at NetApp about four and a half years ago, thereabouts. Um, presently, uh, lead product management and strategy around it. Actually, here uh, sitting in for my boss, who unfortunately is in a hotel room with the influenza, so please bear with me. I'm, I'm, I'll try to do my best impression. Um, I'm also on the board. I'm here in the capacity of, of NetApp, though, just to be clear. So let's kind of kick things off. Like, what's, let's, let's talk about an appliance and what is an appliance. Go, go ahead. What, tell, tell me your definition of an appliance. Definition of appliance. So the, you know, what we're trying to do is to make it easier to, uh, to deploy uh, whatever function it is that we're, we're deploying, right? In this case, obviously, we're talking about OpenStack. But you see these kinds of offerings in a lot of different places where you see integrations of, of hardware and software and to, to make, it e make the deployment easier. One of the things that we see, certainly from HP standpoint, is that we've been building out these, what we call converged infrastructure for, for many, many years, uh, which we take the servers and the storage and the network and we added some software on top of it, offer it as a, as a combined um, bundle. And, and the effort, the purpose of that is to make it simpler for our customers to, to adopt these technologies who, quite frankly, don't want to deal with all of the details of the, uh, of, of, of the infrastructure. And, and so and we're taking that concept and bringing it into the, the OpenStack area as well. Um, what about you, Robert? What, what, what's your definition of an appliance? Um, I've, I've, I think sometimes it's useful to, to kind of describe um, uh, you know, what you see in a tangible way. And I think um, you know, from my earliest memories, I remember this device in the kitchen that produced toast. Uh, oh, but oh, I'm sorry, this is the... Uh, Ah, this is the OpenStack. <laughs> um, that's that's a that's the T release with the ah, poster. Okay. So so I I guess I'm also tempted to kind of look at it from a, more of a product management perspective. Uh, it seems like largely a packaging exercise uh, for the benefit of those consuming it. So uh, something that you know is validated, repeatable, deterministic. Sort of you've you've hidden the complexity and the rough edges. It's something that um, uh, maybe. Uh, because you've ideally hidden the complexity, you, it, it can appeal to a wider audience. I think that's probably a relevant definition for this, this ecosystem. And Jim, what about the kind of differences between converged infrastructure and maybe an appliance or rack appliance? What, what do you see there? Sure. A couple different things. Uh, converged infrastructure itself is when we're taking compute and networking and storage and often having applications or solutions on top of that and offering that up. It gets a little bit fuzzy in terms of is that an appliance, is that not an appliance? I think there are, are true market definitions that analysts track specifically for converged infrastructure. Typically those are hardware-based solutions and then when you start getting to hyper-converged, that would be just on a compute platform and virtualized elements of software-defined networking, software-defined storage and then all in, in the software, all just on the simple compute device. And again, kind of that range of fuzziness around are those or are those not appliances and a little bit of a, a fuzzy definition there, but truly tracked, certainly numbers can be measured on hyper-converged solutions and converged infrastructure in general. Are we moving to like mega hyper-converged infrastructure? Is yes. it, are we kind of evolving? Ultra, ultra mega, yes. Yeah. Well, so, so you guys have had a lot of experience in the space, and who, 
who, who do we think of right now? Like, like, who are the players right now in this space that are doing well and that we know of and we're seeing the traction out there? Uh, I could start a little bit and then pass it on down. I think in the broad sense, a lot of the things that started happening in converged infrastructure, we see like the V-blocks and flex pods and the HP systems and uh, EXA, this, that, and the other from Oracle. And then as we're getting more specific into OpenStack and what we're all here about, we're seeing a, a true emergence of that today with a lot of different companies that have been starting to come out with these. So uh, last week or whatever, the week before last at EMC World, Project Caspian was talked about there. I'll pass the mic and have these guys talk about some of the ones coming out there and, and later I can touch on some of the things that we're doing at Mirantis too. Yeah, I think what you see here is there's a, there's a number of, I mean, all of you have been to the expo floor here. You saw a number of vendors there where they're trying to pull together these, these uh, combined solutions. I mean, the challenge becomes, in some cases, it, certainly in the OpenStack case, there's no, you know, it's no hidden secret that OpenStack's a complicated thing to go implement. And the idea is that we try to put, put this together so that to, to simplify that implementation. And of course, the challenge of that, the, the flip side of that is that whenever you package something up, that li limits your flexibility. And the idea, of course, is to define those things so that you get the maximum amount of, of uh, flexibility without making this thing too, uh, too uh, t without having too many knobs to, to, to turn, because then it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole, of, of the whole offering. Sure. Uh, I, I guess in terms of folks that aren't in the market, unfortunately not Nebula. Um, so you know, a notable example of an, an early appliance. Um, uh, actually, I thought that showed a lot of promise. Maybe a little early. Perhaps that's something we'll touch upon in more depth here. Um, but um, you know, there's a lot of different takes. I, I think that it would be unfortunate to kind of sort of conflate like the unfortunate demise of Nebula with like whether or not there's applicability of appliance to to OpenStack. I think appliance is fairly simplistically, you know, a, again, a way to deliver something in a deterministic, packaged, repeatable way that is easy to consume. And if, in fact, you can also address scalability, ideally in multiple dimensions, uh, it, it, uh, it helps get beyond some of those sort of boundary, traditional boundaries of just everything in one box. Uh, that's an approach that over the years, NAP, for example, uh, you know, plug uh, here in the capacity of NetApp, um, has has solved for uh, in combination with other folks uh, in the way of something we call FlexPod, uh, where we attempt to kind of take a more modular approach to scaling vertically and horizontally, but give you a little bit more of that sort of package experience. Um, and and you'll see some offerings uh, of that ilk here in the, the coming months from us as well. So you know, stuff like FlexPod has been wildly successful. Does that is there a place for that style in the OpenStack community? I, I guess I can offer anecdotally that we knew there was when customers started coming to us and saying, I'm buying all the essential components of FlexBot and assembling it myself to deploy OpenStack. So that certainly, uh, uh, that's not your classic, you know, what if, um, sort of, you know, build a business case, pitch it, and, you know, build it and they'll come. That was a, they built it for us, let's go respond by actually putting the validation and, and, and support model behind it. So, yes. But you can. What are you yeah, I would say that, you know the uh, so HP started doing these converged systems a long time ago. Um, if you you know, I don't know if this is true, but people you know, our converged systems folks will tell you that we started that whole effort a, a number of years ago. Um, but so we we've, we've seen a lot of success behind that. And if you look at the market share, the the size of growth of systems, you know the ser server growth. You look at storage growth as opposed to convert systems growth, convert systems are growing much, much faster than just selling boxes, selling individual uh, storage devices, networking, compute. Um, so as we look at the, the OpenStack area, we say, does, does this make sense to do this kind of offering in, in, in a space which in, in some ways is uh, uh, kind of almost set up to, to be almost like a build your own because you have, uh, because it's such an interesting community effort. And, and we think that it is very applicable. You know, as much as most of the community here that comes is deeply um, entrenched in, in, under, in their understanding of OpenStack, there are thousands of people outside of this conference that are interested in OpenStack but just don't have the, uh, the knowledge, 
um, don't have the, the in-house skills who are interested in, in taking advantage of OpenStack. And I think for them, that's really where these appliances come in. Is it, it, and especially with the, the amount of skills shortage that you see out there in the OpenStack area, I mean, everyone out here is hiring, right? <laughs> um, it's just, um, we see a lot of interest in, in getting something that's easier to deploy. Um, the challenge, of course, is OpenStack is still maturing, as we know, and, and to create something that package something up, as Rob says, it's, 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 the trick is in defining the package so that it's applicable, yet we're still maturing. And I think that's one of the challenges of these kinds of offerings in this particular space. So Jim, we, let's say we, we, we have an appliance. The customer consumes the appliance. What's next? Like, are they able to manage it themselves? Like, have we solved everything? I think that's uh, part of the important thing that one needs to consider when looking at an appliance or as people coming together to build appliances. Because it's certainly, it's great to do a packaging exercise that helps consumption for day one, but I think it's equally important to think about day two and beyond. So management of overall ongoing, how am I gonna upgrade OpenStack? How am I gonna take care of things above OpenStack? How do I bring in more hardware? Things like that need to be considered, and so it, it's more than just throwing everything together in a rack and delivering that to a customer. That's, that's certainly the first step and a big part of it, but not the last step and the whole end all. What, what do, you, do you think that the, um, in general, is, is the, the OpenStack community gonna be supportive of more of these, these turnkey appliances, these, these kind of, are they vendor lock-ins? Does it go away from the openness of OpenStack? I, I don't, I think, let me start off with some numbers at first and then answer a second part on that and get the opinions down the line here. Uh, if we look at and following general IT, not just necessarily OpenStack, general IT, about 20, 25% is being consumed in some form of either converged infrastructure, hyper-converged slash appliance by any definition. So it's not for everybody even in general IT, but we expect that number to follow as OpenStack matures and gets more and more into the mainstream enterprise, we expect that same trend to follow of appliances slash converged infrastructure inside OpenStack. It may start off at 10 or 15%, but we'd expect to see that equal out something similar. And then, I, no, I don't believe it's necessarily lock-in. Certainly, what we're trying to do, we even named it unlocked because there, you should have the choice. Certainly, there'll be lots of choice across the industry and different offerings, and that's already starting now. We mentioned just a, a small number of them, but there's, it's even broader. Um, but even in the program that we're doing here, we will have multiple choices of different hardware to be able to run these different appliances with. So I'll pass that down to you. Yeah, so what, what, what we find, uh, we have a, a couple different uh, solutions today. We have one that's called Helion Rack, which is essentially a, a private cloud in a box, all based on, on OpenStack. And then we have something called Helion Content Depot, which is a, a Swift-based uh, object storage solution. And as we built this out, the challenge that we have in this particular market, which is different from the general overall market, is that the general market is much more mature, right? And as, as much as I come from a server company, you know, how, how much difference is there really between the Dell server and the HP server? Well, I'm not in the, I'm not in the server division, so. <laughs> anyway, it's, you know, that market is maturing quite a bit, and, and the opportunity for, um, for these package offerings is, is much greater. The challenge in the OpenStack area is that things are still shifting a lot. You know, one of the things that, that uh, Jim said is, one of the challenges is updating and, and keeping these updated when you have new releases every six months. You know, how do you, how do you keep these kinds of solutions updated is, is a much bigger challenge in a maturing market than, or in a, in a early market rather, uh, rather than a, in a, a mature market. And that's one of the challenges that we see. For, for ours, the way we approach this is that we have, we end up doing reference architectures, so documents, that you can say, okay, here's the servers, the storage, and have how you connect it all up, and here's all the configurations and all of that. For someone who, who uh, for those people who, who uh, don't need that level, you know, we have the complete thing. We build, a, we build everything in our factory. Just tell us how, many, how much compute, how much storage you need, and we'll build it all up. And we'll select all the equipment. We've already tested it. 
and so on. So that's kind of the, the turnkey solution. But people who don't want that and want to put in, who've standardized on Cisco switches, for example, or on EMC storage, um, or, or, or NetApp storage, you know, we'll swap that out as well, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, you know, there's, there's, in this kind of market, I think these appliances and kind of things need more, you need to build in more flexibility in them mm -hmm. because we're still figuring things out, quite frankly, as, sure. as an industry. Um, so, agreed uh, entirely with, with everything said. Um, I guess maybe just to layer on a little bit, um, I think in, in some ways, like uh, appliances or, or you know, this, this task of like making OpenStack more consumable, which can, is partly solved for via the distributions, you know. Uh, the folks that have, in my observation, succeeded the, the most with OpenStack today have had kind of the institutional expertise, talent, wherewithal to deal with the kind of harder edges, the, the basic task of deploying it, let alone, you know, care and feeding and, God forbid, patching and upgrading. Um, and so in, that's not everyone. Uh, and you know it, things are things are in motion. Uh, I think the distributions, the kind of the the additional polish they put on it, appeals to a broader audience. But 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 the the act of or, or the means of delivering it in the form of an appliance, ex, you know, think of that as an experience, is is necessary or perhaps an eventuality, however you want to kind of interpret it, it to, to bridge to that mere mortal. You know, the mm -hmm. folks that like just want the capability. They don't necessarily want to be a software development shop. Um, you know, hey, maybe it's that my software developers are, you know, starting at AWS and the economics are such that I need to repatriate it on-prem. But boy, I can't like possibly contemplate what's involved with deploying and running OpenStack. Give me that OpenStack in a box in a corner, you know, in the extreme to repatriate you. Because again, the economics favor it. Um, I'm not saying don't stay at AWS. You know, the, the process might be bringing it back, could be bursting out to it. But not everyone is going to be a professional software development shop. Not everyone's going to be of the CI, CD, you know, mentality, mindset. Um, uh, so, so yes, it has to happen. Now, the question is, I think the second part of the question was around lock-in. Um, I can't imagine how it would be a problem in the sense that um, if it is OpenStack itself, then what you have are an you know, an open, viable, sustaining community that's well supported across a variety of, w of vendors that allow you to like build your application logic against this open API, this abstraction, and then you could swap out the implementation behind it as necessary, as perhaps like pricing dictates or perhaps capabilities require. So, so if you're you're standardizing on the OpenStack API set, that's your means of avoidance of lock-in. Now, there's lots of different ways to, to define lock-in, of course. One would be, I'm locked in because that's the best possible thing. That's the kind of lock-in you, you might want. Um, you would like the option, the escape hatch, so to speak, but everyone's going to try to distinguish and differentiate. Hmm. And maybe they succeeded, and it's the exact right thing, and you, it, there's the bar is too high to go to something else. Well, that's an acceptable form of lock-in. Um, I just want to add one more thing, and I will kind of wear the other hat briefly. Um, so those of you, I'm sure several folks in the audience are familiar with uh, the move to what's called DEF core, definition of core. I think it's probably a little bit easier to, th to think of it as a specification, maybe it should be called DEF spec, but it is called DEF core. And what this is is a, a, a means of looking back at what's commonly deployed for interoperability. So the, you know, a future state is that if I'm going to write to an OpenStack API here, I can reasonably expect it's commonly implemented over here, whether that's an appliance, whether that's a public cloud, whether that's hosted private cloud, whatever. Um, that that uh, helps you also avoid the lock-in. So, and if, if we want to get f further into that, there's also some other relevant topics uh, around DEF core. Do you, you mind if I? No, go ahead. Okay. No, I think, def I think so, it's very important that we... So, uh, so there is one additional thing um, that I think is relevant to the topic of appliance. Um, so within DEF core, there is a, a provision that stipulates that um, you have to have designated sections. Designated sections are actual upstream or, or you know, OpenStack code from upstream. So when you ship an appliance that has the OpenStack you know, eligibility for the logo, for the mark, you know, to be an OpenStack product, official OpenStack product, it has to actually contain some of that, open, you know, that actual open source code itself. Um, that's the way it currently looks. So if you're going to build an OpenStack appliance, you know, that's, 
that's one way of assuring that it, there is commonality. I'll, I'll editorialize briefly. I don't actually think that's necessary as long as you just have a common API and a specification. I think at some point maybe you can move pay on that, but uh, I'll get off the editorial and give you the mic back. Let me throw out another question kind of, kind of around that. And, you know, Robert, you were talking about your customers are basically buying the uh, you know, NetApp solution, but doing it themselves. And, and what is the, the value prop for the appliance? Like, what's that biggest thing? Because I'll tell you, when, when I talk to customers and I say, here's this reference architecture that's proven, they take it up and they tear it up and they said, no, it's, you know, I'm doing it this way because I've had these experiences. And there, it is, it's because um, this OpenStack is so open and you can, do what, I mean, you can make whatever you want. It's so many choices. Where, you know, how, how do you kind of change that around? Is it a simplicity message? Is it a, you know, simple scales? Or like what, what is that value prop? I'll say that what I see is a huge variance in the types of customers who are interested in, in OpenStack. You know, there are those who um, have you know, hundreds of engineers who are deeply involved, they're committing, they are contributing, and quite frankly, it is highly unlikely that they will ever look at one of these appliances because they've got all the talent in-house. They sure. won't be able to figure out exactly how to get exactly what they want. There's another extreme which, which uh, quite frankly, I believe is the majority of the market at this point, are people who don't have that capacity, people who don't have that experience. People who look at OpenStack and say, hey, I like that, the openness, the no vendor lock-in, I like the idea of portability, but I don't have 100 engineers who know OpenStack. And in those cases, those are, those are customers who are ideal for the appliances or the uh, you know, cloud in the box, if you will. And there's a, a spectrum in, in there. And, and when you're in these maturing markets, I think that spectrum tends to be wider. Uh, so that you have the people who say, you know, I, okay, so we have some OpenStack knowledge, uh, and, but I, I like this server or that storage, or I like you know, whatever, whatever component, and I want to customize it partially, but not completely. Uh, and, and so there's a lot, I, I see there's a lot of variance in this particular market that more so than what you would normally, what you see in a more mature market. Yeah, to add a little color to that, and I agree with, with what everyone has said here, the different ways of consuming it, you can go from what uh, Ken just talked about, a, a company that has the engineering know-how and the bodies to put on it, and they may or may not even use a distribution, and that's perfectly fine. They can do so. Then there's the people in the middle, and uh, this is probably the majority at this point, they're looking at distributions, getting that support and the continued upgradability of that, that you get everything, all the nice things about the distribution, but still that's gonna require engineering services, either ones that they have or with a consulting firm, uh, whether that's a, a big, huge global SI or a company like mine or a company like yours or what have you, need to get that kind of capability. The value proposition for the appliance is really the very, the faster time to value for the cloud. If we can get a cloud in a, in a rack, racked and stacked as fast as there is the, the hardware material available, so assuming it's all, it's all ready to go, you can do that in a day, right? How long does it take you guys to, to rack something up full, full rack? A couple minutes. We're good. A okay, couple minutes. <laughs> Uh, what we're designing then is really a full automation process to be able to load all the software, ship that out, and then really at that point we're talking about plugging in power, integrating into the network, and it's ready to go. So in less than a day on site, far less than a day, you are now ready to go with your cloud. That's vastly different than going with a services engagement to make a bespoke on-premises cloud. Yep. Both are good. How about uh, questions? Anyone have any questions specifically about my day? And go to the, go to the jump to the mic back there. Yeah, thank you. So you guys are talking about the advantages and disadvantages for the um, appliance. And uh, my understanding of appliance is basically you pack the things to the user, he never opens it, it just works. <laughs> but now you're packaging the moving target, it always moves, right? Uh, so. Uh, it seems that it's not time, given the ambulance uh, bankruptcy. Uh, so I, uh, and then the customer you want help, he cannot open the box, right? 
So unless you solve the problem like uh, Chrome or iOS to smooth upgrade, it would be disaster for customers. So after six months, it's obsolete. The next six months, it's dead. So what is the value proposition really? We block works because VMware is really traditional software. So it's 18 months upgrade. So that's mine. So I want to say you can solve the first three months problem, but how you solve next three months and next. So we may months. want to touch on, on each of us from, from the standpoint of what we're doing at Marantis is building in automated installation. So in our case, that's using fuel and then automated testing so we can certify on day one that this is an up and running appliance and we recertify upon day n upgrading the software, automated install, and then a full recertification. So it handles that situation. No, continually doing that. So every time you want to do an upgrade, you come out, it automate, it's a company like Redapt would come out, they would then perform the upgrade, all automated in terms of how it's done, and then recertified. That's a, a goal in what we're delivering and what we're doing. So there's no question that, uh, that this is more complicated or more challenging than with, with a mature market. I think that's, that's the, key, uh, the key point in all of this, is it depends on where you are in the market. Um, for, for HP, we do something very similar to, to what uh, Jim's talking about at, at Marantis, you know, and, and that we, we re recertify and, and test. Um, for us, with our, with our distribution, you know, we, we'll roll out a, a, a distribution, and then at some time after that, we'll have tested the hardware, tested the appliance to make sure that it is, um, that it is updatable and, and it can be easily updated and quickly updated. Um, it, I, I think that it is a bigger challenge in this market. Uh, there's no question, because we are in a, still in a maturing motion. But the, the question is, is are we too early? I, you know, I, I think it's the sort of thing where uh, we're trying to serve a, a, a broad set of customers. You know, those who, quite frankly, don't have um, the knowledge that all you guys have, right, in, in the room here, and, and want to take advantage of this, um, but just don't have the people in-house. How many uh, folks here, I mean, just a show of hands, do you think the, the, an appliance like is, is a good idea? Sh show of hands? And kind of a bad idea or not supporting OpenStack? Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys exit the, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you, you'll, you, you'll know who I want to hear, do you have a question? Do you have something? Uh, oh. I'd love to I, I don't really have a question. I, I guess the the comments about open, you know, about vendor lock-in, um, and 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 some of the Q and A on installs and upgrades and certification, they kind of seem to be at odds with each other. To me, I think once you start down this path, from the point of view of the organization that is that is uh, uh, buying into this, you 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 are starting down a path which will not lead you to uh, adopting OpenStack, you know, as a more general flavor eventually. I, I don't know, you know, and I wasn't gonna raise it as a question, but since you asked, there you go. Yeah, it's a good point, yeah. <laughs> so so um, if, yeah. if I understood all of the point correctly, um, yeah. I, I, guess it, I guess it depends on what you're integrating against. What, you know, and that part of this probably bears a conscious decision. You know, the things that you would, sit on top of an appliance, the things you would host on it, you know, how are you interacting with it? Uh, it's probably the case that most vendors of appliances, not all, uh, are gonna seek to offer some sort of dif vendor differentiation. Mine's better because of X, Y, and Z. Um, and you know, if the intent, and the reason why you're at OpenStack in the first place is the avoidance of lock-in, mm -hmm. then um, I think there's a, a, a long, hard look at whether or not you really want to derive that potential value. Uh, to, to potentially preserve the, the path to something else. There, I th in my opinion, there are places where it's not only like sufficient, the bar, you know, perhaps the, the value that could be derived is sufficient that you, you will, but indeed, you know, and I've seen in places um, where in fact it's a critical uh, mean, it's critical to the viability of the business, you know, that I do take advantage of it. And, Again, I think that's the kind of lock-in we're willing to accept because the lights are on. But it's, it's a hard decision. 
you know, so w what are you integrating against? And I, I, I'm glad you brought it up because I think it's a, it's a good perspective on it. And I think OpenStack really affords a, a different mentality than, let me, let me do a compare and contrast. If there's some of the other converged infrastructures out there that have software on them with perpetual licensing, um, once you go down that path, you are correct, appliance or not, if you don't like it and you try and back out of it, you're stuck. That's the, the license. You can no longer use it anymore if you want to change things or, or what have you, or you're no longer uh, going to get that next upgrade. With OpenStack, it's different. So yes, it's delivered as an appliance. But as uh, Rob mentioned earlier, it's based on a distribution. It's based on the same APIs and interfaces. If you wanted to uh, go away from what the appliance affords, you can do that. It's maybe starting to get less of an appliance, but it's still a fully operational, fully functional, something you can use to have your cloud on premises. No problem at all. And so it, you could even switch distributions if you wanted. You could switch hardware, all sorts of freedom there. But then, you know, it, it's, it's no longer the original appliance. And you know what? That may be perfectly acceptable. So we've got time for a few. If you, if you would like to actually purchase the appliance, can you form a line behind the mic? <laughs> and then we, we have time for a couple more questions. Uh, go ahead. Uh, actually, we bought. Um, I work for a huge telco in Brazil, and we we do have a, you know I don't I don't I don't count them, but we do have a lots of V blocks down there, and we are taking uh, the opposite direction. In order to get out of the the locking, we're thinking about OpenStack to be our let's say our I won't say a savior, but you know the one that will break the stuff that we down here that we have down there. But even even though. Uh, it is hard to break these because it is so uh, sliced and diced that even the most wild uh, OpenStack developers, they look at it and say, oh, no, it doesn't fit. I would like to ask you guys what you guys think about uh, not, you know, appliances not only for the future, but let's say that there's a bunch of companies that already have uh, a hardware that will be around for the next, let's say, three to four years and they're not satisfied with the solution that they have because they don't deliver what their customers are asking for. And do you guys see it as an opportunity for whatever, for Mirantis, for developers all around to redeploy these uh, appliances, be it VCE or uh, Nutanix, whatever, as, as, a, as, a, as a, let's say, as VBlock, uh, uh, I'm sorry, as OpenStack appliances, so to say? Certainly could see that as an opportunity, yes. I think it voids the warranty a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, that's, but that's a decision that we take. Yeah. We, actually, we took. Okay. I mean, one of the things that we did when we, we architected our, uh, our solutions is that we did it purposefully using uh, product that you can use to do other things with. You know, one of the things that Jim mentioned is that, you know, you can switch distributions. You know, our, our solutions actually designed that you can do that. In fact, if, if you... If you made a bad decision and you bought this appliance and you think, oh my God, what the heck did I do? I don't want this anymore. You can actually use, use to do something completely different. They're all industry standard servers. Uh, you, can, you can redeploy them. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen, right? Hopefully that the customer understands what they're trying to do, that our sales rep hasn't sold them something that they don't want. Yeah. And, um, uh, that well, <laughs> it, it, it yeah. does happen. Uh, but the, the, certainly the intention is to be able to provide a, an offering, uh, something that can be upgraded and that, that meets what the customer is looking for. So we've got five more minutes. Let's try to do one question, one answer. Yeah, the last so, two here. Um, as we look at the marketplace and providing these appliances and who they're targeted at, right? We're targeting down market to get people accelerated and on the, on the OpenStack bandwagon, right? Those customers traditionally are very slow for upgrades and very slow for change, right? So as OpenStack continues to progress every six months and have releases and all that, how, how far ahead have your organizations thought about backporting capability? Because you're going to have a customer out there that's not going to upgrade their instance for two years, right? And so what's the, what's the tow line, right, that they have to continue to push out these updates in order to, to make sure they stay within compliance of your reference architecture? You've sold them. 
Yeah, so this is not a this is a, a a challenge I'd say is not just specific to appliances. Sure. Right. And and we know that most of the the enterprises update every every other big release. Right. right every, yeah. every couple of years. The challenge with OpenStack is that we've got new releases every six months. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I, you're, I not, don't know add, you're not required. Not required. To do that. Yeah. Right. And I think that these companies will not. You know, most mm -hmm. of the companies are are not going to update that that okay. frequently. Uh, because they just can't handle that level of, of, of change. Sure. Okay. Thank you for your question. So you have a window right now, but I think that's going to close. Remember the keynote where we were all encouraged to go out and make OpenStack more operator friendly, <coughs> five times, ten times easier to install. I mean, ultimately, over some number of years, there's going to be a new OpenStack project, I'll suggest the name OpenStack Existential, where it just wakes up, installs itself on whatever's there, all the upgrades are automatic, probably continuous. I mean, ultimately, that's where the stuff has to go. So are we talking about... Um Autonomous sentient Skynet OpenStack <laughs> because um, I actually don't care anymore because I don't think I'll be around. So. Um, but no, I, I, if I understand the point, um, you're saying the window's closing. Sure. You know. Well, no, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, yeah. go for the window right now and do it. I just think that we were all encouraged to go out, and I think we've seen a change in OpenStack from a developer focus to an operator focus, and I think that's just going to get more so. She's saying this is like kind of a stopgap, yeah. what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, I, so, yeah, there's a window. Uh, who can get there first with something that's viable? Actually, I think we've already determined that first wasn't necessarily best, but, but rather, um, you know, viable when the market's ready, um, it, you know, is, is a good idea here. Um, and at some point in time, if that's sufficiently profitable, others will, will, will also deliver the sum of the same and there'll be a commoditization trend. I think that's just kind of like the technology cycle we're in, not to oversimplify it. Any um, final thoughts? Jim, any final thoughts? Kind of summing up everything. I, I think it's really a, a good turning point that we're seeing about at this time where we have 6,000 people here. We are seeing the, matur the maturity going over that curve. We're starting to see the enterprises adopting this more and more. So the tail end of 2015 going into 2016, the, the window of people looking at these types of, of solutions, I think the time is now. So I think it's a great time for it. Maybe in the long run it, it does go off to that noble goal where it's all completely automated. <coughs> but I think we're really heading the right direction as a community with everything we're doing. Yep. All right, Jim, Ken, Robert, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, everyone, please come up and ask questions while we're here. And thank you all. Thank you all for coming.